the new and improved battle log is helping us understand a couple of things in rise of kingdoms and in this video i really have some breaking news regarding how passive skills active skills trinkets or accessories how you want to call them or talents how do they work how do they apply on the target because we didn't know before that i've done a video about how buffs and debuffs work and pretty much that is how everyone thought that they work that only the strongest one always apply well i'm gonna shock you in this video about some things that stack so much that it is really breaking news game breaking however you want to call it so let's go ahead and let's inspect some crazy tests hello everyone and welcome back to another rise of kingdom video my name is legend ronnie and today i'm gonna shock you with this report that uh, i have test on so the first test i'm gonna go ahead and go straight into it after that i'm gonna detail a little bit more about it the first test that i have done was constantine with etherfled and my apologies for me being so small but i want to make sure that you guys understand and you see what's happening on the screen rather than seeing me and going on to the turn 13 this is what i wanted to show this is on the first test so probably things that you see over here you probably know the troops attack my uh, minus 40 percent on the enemy troops defense and troops health now also accessories show on our side as you're noticing the counter attack damage taken minus five percent from the delayed amulet all the damage taken that's from um, primary skill from constantine because i was mentioning in his commander spotlight that it is all damage taken decrease and there you have it now it shows properly into the troops buff arrows of iron and there you have it the constantine edict of milan the troops attack they are both on the same turn but only the strongest one apply but again they are both active skills and that's why only the strongest one apply you see the troops defense you see the troops health and uh, the march speed reduction you're probably noticing minus five percent and specifically on cavalry that's because of etherfled but that minus five percent march speed that is from talents and that is a passive skill the other march speed reductions that we have they are also passive skills which means that passive skills do stack but I do have to show you more reports to make you understand that passive skills do stack. My apologies for having to use Minamoto. I honestly would have used another commander, but I had no other choice. So I used Minamoto and Alexander, and this is the first turn. I just want to show you something. This is the fourth skill from Alexander. Because we don't have a shield, it gives troops attack plus 40%, then you get the infantry attack plus 30% and the march speed. You have everything over here. Just to clarify how uh, Alexander 4 skill is working, because probably wasn't showing properly in the past. And now if I'm looking over here, the third 13 one is probably Alexander doing his second skill. Oh, here you have it. Troops defense third plus 30% on the turn 14 and if we're looking at the turn 14 it says over here shield of the king minamoto gained the shield due to shield effect caused by alexander the great and it turns into troops defense like it says on the fourth skill going on to the turn 15 we still have the troops defense it means that the shield is still on and then going on to the turn 16 is turns into attack because the shield is gone and so on but this is not what i wanted to show this is, was just a little bit of a explanation about alexander four skill what i wanted to show is turn 34 and as you're noticing already on the screen it says damage taken plus 60 percent and you're probably wondering where did i get that if i'm looking over here is all damage increase by 30 percent due to blessing effect caused by alexander the great shield of the kings all damage taken increased by 30 percent due to bleeding effect caused by miramoto both are passive skills and because they are passive skills they stack now if you want to go deeper into this you have mulan which mulan on the four skill also increase damage taken by the target by 
another 20% and being a passive skills it should stack with this uh, passive skills as well now to answer you all this it means that active skills they do not stack but active skills they stack with passive skills and passive skills are considered whichever you see on commander skills where it says passive skills those then you have the accessories and i'm going to show you a picture regarding that the accessories from the commanders are also considered passive and we have the talents from commanders which are also considered passives so all the passives they stack together and only one active stacks so always the strongest active now it's all clear how everything is stacking and how everything is working so I was mentioning about the picture. So let me go ahead and pop in the first picture. This picture is from uh, Roses Pika. This is how I was told. I'm not sure if it's the 1239 <laughs> Rose Pika or just the name of the player is Rose Pika. My apologies if I didn't ask more information. But the picture is from him or her, I suppose. And uh, you're noticing the troops held minus 60% because this is how all this rumble started. Because I got this picture and I said, yo, this battle log is effed up. I mean, it, it can't be the truth because it's always the strongest one works. I mean, that's how I know. And I'm pretty sure that's, that's how many people knew. You see Ethelfled, Arrow of Iron, right? Which is an active skill. And then we see passive skills from chandra gupta third skill you can check that and then we see from uh, concealed dagger which is also another 15 percent health decrease so those two are passive chandra and dagger and then you have one active from ethelflaed and there you get 30 percent health decrease 45 percent defense decrease and troops attack minus 30 percent honestly that's pretty phenomenal which kind of brings dagger quite high up on the rankings of how good it is for rallying purposes not to mention mora's web now i'm gonna show you another picture which this one was done by maverick and maverick sent me this picture as well and he told me that he's roses pika all right so my apologies if something is messed up in the names and it's not the one billion maverick he knows who it is. So this is the second picture that he sent me. What we have over here is Tomiri's passive skill, the one that increases Archer's attack and the one that uh, decreases the defense on the target with a chance. So his Tomiri's third skill, I believe, is on level two. Once I'm going done with the reports, I'm going to go into commanders and explain a little bit more. And you see the troops defense minus 45% because Ramses' primary skill is an active skill and Tomiri's third skill, it is a uh, passive skill and you get minus 45% troops defense. So it means that if you do have a max Tomiris, you can get to up to minus 60% defense. And as more passive skills as you still have, they would have keep stacking up, including Mora's Web or various other defense reduction that are considered as passive. We've done some math, or at least uh, he done some math, the player who sent me the report, and you can probably go up to a hundred percent defense reduction in everything lines up, and to about sixty. 5 or 64.5 percent health reduction on a target not to mention attack reduction so the debuff is real and that's probably why when you swarm buildings they go down so fast is because it's just happening that you have a lot of marchers with debuffing capabilities as a lot of these commanders now recently all have debuffing capabilities now let's go a little bit into the commanders and let's debate even more about it Constantine active skill, Ethelflaed active skill, and this is where you have it, the difference when I was talking about the march speed, that the cavalry march speed reduction was 50% and then other units march speed was 30%. The one thing I haven't seen is the counterattack damage taken reduction by Ethelflaed, but this means that this is not a conditional buff, it is if it doesn't apply or if it doesn't show in the truce buff or the battle log. And this is my Constantine's talent tree, 
where I was explaining why we have the 5% Mars speed reduction. Now I can go ahead and explain even further when I was talking in some of my live streams or some of my videos why I was believing that Saladin and Richard it was bugged and actually they are not bugged. It's because this Mars speed reduction is just literally stacks up. You have Tyrannical Lion. Every 10 seconds, the target's Mars speed reduction by 50% for 5 seconds. Now, this is a passive skill, as it says over here. And then you can go on his primary skill, which is an active skill. And you have Mars speed reduction by 50%, which is not a whole lot. But then you go to a Max Saladin. Because uh, why not? And then when you look at the primary skill of a uh, Max Saladin, Mars speed reduction by 50% for 5 seconds. And that's why you probably have the impression that some marches are just literally not moving or just standing there. Because you get 50% from Saladin, which is an active skill. You get 50% from Richard, which is a passive skill. And if you want to go further... You can probably have a talent tree with Cage of Thorns maxed out, which will bring you another 25% Mars speed reduction. And if you want to go even further and stack things up even further, you can go to Edelflet's second skill, which obviously is a passive skill, which also stacks, and you get another 50% <laughs> calf reduction. So how deep and how far can you go with Mars speed reduction? I think you can go pretty damn far, and that's why some rallies are just literally stuck or just literally not moving at some point because it's so many passive skills going on which those stack that it's almost impossible for the rally to move it's probably having like i don't know an inch of a march speed i believe or probably none at all that's why it's all that impression that it's probably a bug which it isn't it's just that the passive skills stack and you have mora's web as a trinket which also reduces calves defense let me go ahead and let me check. I want to make sure that I'm not doing mistakes. I'm going on the trinket real quick. Cavalry, Mars speed. There you have it, another 8%. <laughs> so if, if someone with Mora's web is swarming Cav rally, it makes sense why the Cavs rally are just not moving. And the damage reduction that I was testing from Minamoto with the Warlord from the fourth skill. Like I was saying, I would have choose someone else, not Minamoto. But my Mulan is uh, not maxed out, which is a passive skill. And then you go on Alexander, which is, again, Shield of the Kings. Oh, yes, this is included in the active skill because it is an expertise. But if we go further down, we can see another commander over here, which is Mulan. And this is a passive skill. It means that Mulan with Alexander and Minamoto, they can stack and you can go up to 60% damage increase on the target. Honestly, this is uh, pretty phenomenal and this is breaking news, game breaking, knowing how all this works. Because if you can apply all these things on a target, well, that's going to be some pretty phenomenal results. And I can guarantee you that uh, some flags, some buildings in Ark of Osiris can definitely go down much faster if you make the right setup of swarming. So I hope you don't understand this video and the importance of this video because, like I said, this is some very important things that you want to know that passive skills, as many as possible, they stack, apparently, but active skills is just one that stack. Now the question is, if you swarm a target with 10 daggers, does that mean that the target will completely have no health? Personally, that's what I would understand I don't think that just one dagger will work because each march brings a passive skill into effect. So if you're having 10 daggers on 10 marches swarming a target, it is the same with the silent trial, which I believe Flesh, I'm bringing his name up, done a test and he even told me that it does reduce the marches rage on each turn if you use like five silent trials swarming a target. It's just that once the target goes into a cycle of skills, that's what he told me, it doesn't really affect it anymore because the target just generates too much rage once it's done the first skill. You can only delay the first skill. Which brings us to this concealed dagger. So if you're swarming a target with 10 concealed dagger, it means that 
you're pretty much reducing the target's health to nothing. <laughs> or if you're swarming a target with uh, 10 Moros web, I'm giving you an example, and you're having Chandra Guptas as well, I mean, I mean, that target would mean it doesn't have any defense. Obviously, further and deeper test might be needed, but since I'm on this trinket, because I know I was always in favor of Ring of Doom and Horde of Fury and so on, does that mean that the Dagger and Mora's Web are now the most strongest accessories in the game? I'm as shocked as you are, and I just can't give my answer right now in this video to tell you the truth. Um, but the reason I also went for the Horn of Fury, and I did thought about it before I've done the video, is because exactly of the same thing going on the first set of skills. That's the most important part. How many times it happened that you killed a target and you left the battle and then you switched to a target and you needed probably another 10, 13 turns or how many to get into an another set of skills. So that was my whole reason of getting the Horn of Fury and then probably helping generating more rays so I can do more skills because more skills you do, more damage you do. That's the whole reason. And then I was also thinking about Sunset Canyon because that's something you do every day. And it's same thing, it's a tactic that I'm using right now in Sunset Canyon is about Mai Guan Yu doing the first kill because there's three second silence on usually at least two up to three targets. And by doing that, it also allows my other marches to do a set of skills and you start getting the troops advantage over him because you've done the skills before that. So having the Horn of Fury would also help that even more and so on. That was my thought on going with the Four Horn of Fury because we never had problems taking down targets, like really, really needing a dagger. I mean, so far in KVK taking flags and other structures, we just literally didn't have any problems. So I don't see us really having problems. And that's why I always advise everyone to go for the horn because I know as an overall utility, it will be much higher um, or utility in general, it would be much higher. I still see these daggers and the Mora's web uh, very useful either on players that like to swarm things, swarming flags in uh, KVK. I believe that these two become very essential for that purpose. And I also believe that in Ark of Osiris, this will become very essential when you rally in Ark of Osiris or you swarm buildings in Ark of Osiris. But me personally, for what I really want, I still think that Ring of Doom and Hold of Fury might be the first two I'm going to get before I'm going to get this. Since I'm not going to max tech, I'm definitely not going to be a rally leader. There's going to be players that will max tech. They already said that they will max tech. So those will be rally leaders. And I def definitely don't have the troops to spawn buildings either. So I'll leave this to your choice regarding if Concealed Dagger or Morab's Web is more important or Horror and Fury or uh, Ring. I'll definitely think about it because swarming buildings in Ark of Osiris is definitely going to happen. So I might just take one and one. One what I want and one what I don't want just to have it for Ark of Osiris, the future Osiris League. But I just leave it to your option because it's needed a ton more test to really tell like is really having five daggers and five more as web is the most deadliest combo of accessories that you can have over your five marchers or having five horns and five rings we're not on a test server so this is so hard for any of us to tell you right now this information but i do hope that everything that i said in this video regarding the battle logs and how everything is working on the picture that i just showed you and the test that we have done will make you understand and your understanding how passive skills and active skills now actually working because honestly for me it was really breaking news until next time this is your boy Jerani signing off peace out and take care see you on the next one and stay safe out there my friends see you on the next one let's see what else we can find who knows i'm getting excited